Good day everybody, it's me again Lucky Kuhn and today's video we'll be doing another tutorial and it's all about how to achieve a lineless art with basic features but can also work on a pro level result. So what you're gonna need? First of all you need patience, especially if you're, you'll be doing a ridiculous details of drawing because you're gonna need a lot of layers when you're gonna use this method. And then, before you start everything, you need drawing for inventors. You need to know how to draw. Because I'm not going to teach you how to draw here. I'm going to teach you how to color and end it up into a lineless color artwork. And of course you need a lighting knowledge. If you don't have those, then we can use what you have now. It's still possible. But make sure whenever you're finished having this tutorial, make sure to study drawing fundamentals because it is very important. You can draw almost anything with it. Okay, now the application we can use. You can actually use different kind of application. Probably most application does have this similar features. This would be only using the basics. Basic features but still capable on achieving some awesome results. But today I'll be using Clip Studio Paint. Okay, let's begin. So first you have to draw anything you want. Sketch is fine, you don't need to do line art. But as much as possible, make it clean. A cleaner sketch so that we can see clearly with our details. And then turn that into 50% opacity or lower as long as you can still see it. Now create new layer. Bring that layer to the bottom of the sketch. Make sure the sketch is on the top of all the layers. We're just gonna delete that later but sketch is our guide for our details. And then use your brush or pen to color the first subject which is for me it's the pop. You can use the brush or the pen if you want. Or you can use the lasso tool and try to select the subject. Whenever you paint inside the selection it stays within the selection. So you don't have to worry about the other areas of the canvas or you can just use brush or pen it's fine doesn't have to worry about it but remember the last tool because we're gonna use that later for the color you can pick any color you want because we're gonna change that later but it is also fine if you're just gonna pick the right color for your drawing it's fine still fine so now i'm gonna continue coloring the pop now for the other objects, you need to create another layer for it and do the same thing. For me, I'm going to start with this cone and choose a different color and do this to the rest of the objects. So now you might be thinking there will be a lot of layers if you're gonna do it like this. Adding more and more and more layers, which is actually fine. But there's a way you can save layers by reusing the other layers as long as it's not overlapping. Let's say in my case, I'll be using the pops layer and then color it. Now I'm going to bring this layer to the top of the other layers, just like that. Now we're going to change the color of the subject. So what you're gonna do is to use the lock transparent pixel and click that. Now you already have the icon over here. What does this do is whenever you paint something to that layer, it only stays inside the layer. It's a little similar to the selection, but here we're not using any selection. We use the layer as our basis, so you can just recklessly paint over it. Just like that. You can do that to every subject you want to change. But what if you're unsure about the color? You can select the area by using the lasso tool, just like that. And then go to edit, tonal correction, and use saturation and luminosity. You can actually change the color by sliding the hue, but I'm just gonna keep it red. You can change the saturation by sliding the saturation. And you can change the luminosity, the darkness and the lightness of the object by sliding it. Then click OK and then the select. Now did you know that background can affect the color of this subject? So I advise you to create the background first. But if you want to keep it white then it's fine. There's no problem with that. But if you're making a full image then you have to make a background. I already made a background and you can just do any fancy background if you want. I'm just gonna do it simple. Just clouds and grass. Oh, I forgot. I'm going to add new layer 
for the nose and the eyes. This is the good thing about this, you can add more and more layers without affecting any layers. Now I'm gonna finish the puppy first before we proceed. Alright, I'm done with the puppy. And now, the next thing you need to do is to add the shadow. For adding a shadow, there's an easy way to do it. So what are you going to do is to create new layer. And now, control select this picture of the layer you want to add the shadow like for example this pop right here just control click this layer right here this picture this square and you'll get the selection of that layer and now make sure you highlighted the new layer so that whenever you color the selection it doesn't affect the original layer and you can change it to multiply I choose purple to make it look stylized but if you want it to be realistic you have to consider the background because there's a bunch of colors in the surroundings that affects the color of the shadow that is why the shadow isn't black as of this case I should have choose the shadow as blue because of the sky it doesn't have to be very blue just make it bluish just like that and if I want to color pick this layer just gonna just gonna back to normal and alt then click it or you can just I, I, I'll just gonna go to blue just like that and then go back to multiply and you can use the hue saturation to change it and you can now continue to your coloring Just use the eraser if you want to erase something and stick to one color only for now. Don't use any soft brush or pen just yet. Do this to other layers as well. Now I am sure that you'll be seeing a lot of layers after you added the shadow and for others it will be a little confusing. So to make it less confusing, right click the shadow layer, the multiply layer, go to layer settings and clip to layer below it. Now because of this, whenever you paint to that layer, you don't need any selection because it won't go out to the layer where it's clipping, which is the bottom layer of it. You'll see this here. You'll see this little red here. It means it's clipping underneath it. If I'm going to do that to other layer, now the puppy is clipping to the bottom layer, which is the platform. So now to cancel that, you just go back there and uncheck it. Now do the same thing to your other object. Now you can do the same by adding new layer, then layer settings, click to layer below, and you can paint freely. And of course, don't forget to use multiply. And now it looks less confusing, well at least for me. The important is you have the indication right here. Now we're done with the shadow, you can soften the other edges if the shape is more curvy by using the blur tool. As easy as this. You can actually change the intensity of the blur. Now the next thing is the very important thing in lineless art. Adding the ambient occlusion. I always mention that to different kind of videos I have but it's just so important especially in this particular art style because ambient occlusion acts as a line art for a lineless art. Line art is basically ambient occlusion. That is why there's a thicker line weight on line art because there's a lot of shadow in that area. Ambient occlusion exists on the corners. It's the darkest area of the shadow. If you look each corner of the room or place, you'll be seeing a subtle shadow, the darkest shadow, everywhere. If there will be a line art that looks like this, it is easier to see the information to our drawing, but without any line art it looks like that. It is hard for us to know the detail of the platform without any sketch. The design of the platform is intentional just to show you this. So with the help of ambient occlusion, we will be able to see the information. So how we're gonna do it? Turn on the sketch layer first, lower the opacity, but make sure you still be able to see it, and then add new layer. Then clip to layer below. Use any soft brush. In my case, I'm gonna use the airbrush. Pick the color black, and then 
carefully try to darken the corners. Ctrl Z is your best friend here. And again, for the nose, nose has corners. So use your lasso tool, select those areas, and go to soft brush again, and add it here. If you don't want that selection to be visible, you can just press Ctrl H to hide it. It's still there, but it's invisible. You can use soft eraser to erase and do the same action to the other layers as well. Of course, to define the shape of the snout, you again use the lasso tool, then select those specific area only. Doesn't have to be perfect, it's fine, don't worry about it. And use the airbrush, Control H to hide, and then use the airbrush, make it larger, and hide the sketch, use erase. There you have it. And do the same thing over and over again. Don't be so harsh on doing the strokes. Apply it gently and be patient. You're gonna need it. Alright, as you can see, this is now looking better. You'll be able to see the information without the sketch. Of course, we're not done here just yet. We have to add the ambient lighting. There's ambient occlusion and there's an ambient lighting. Ambient lighting is just basically some reflective light or bounce light or whatever light that's not directly came from the main light source. It means it bounces from different location. Let's say there's a light over here or here, then it bounces there or 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 a light from here. No, 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 no. A light from here, then it bounces there, there, and there. So it will hit this side of the ball or the snout of the pop. If there's a light to here and then it bounces everywhere. That's how reflective light works and bounce light works. So you're going to add another layer, one last layer, and do this again. Do the clipping to layer again. And I'm going to add, you just have to color pick, but we're not gonna need this to the eyes because the, the detail is too small. So no one's gonna zoom it in and try to see that very subtle details. If you want, you can add that, but but for me, I, I, I just don't, I just don't need to. So we're gonna use the pop, but we're going to do it to the ball first. So color pick the color of the highlighted area of the ball, and then apply a light softly below it. In reality, light bounces to anything and casts light to different areas in the shadow, except the area where ambient occlusion is. Maybe it's a little advanced for others, but if you have the idea and with a little observation around you and then practice it, you'll be able to do it. You already get the idea, you just have to practice it a little. And I'm sure you'll get a satisfying result playing with this. So do this to the other object as well. And now this is it, it should be finished, but we have to apply the highlights or specular or whatever you call it. The lightest area, you have to overpaint in this part. You always end up overpainting everything to get the result what we wanted. Since we already have all the informations we need, it is now easier for us to add more details. Now we have to flatten each object to one layer. To merge it, select all the layers you want to merge and right click, merge selected layer. Now it's merged. Do the same thing to other object as well. Now we only have one, two, three, four, five layers. And you can name it if you want to. You can lock transparent each of it so that it will be easier for us to paint over to it and without worrying affecting the other layers. We're going to add the brightest area of the highlight. For the brush, you can actually use different kind of brush or any kind of brush, whatever style you prefer. And you can freely paint anything on top of it. We already have a great result and what you need is to polish it. Now this one should be done. 
and let's have a quick recap onto a much complex drawing. My original rough concept of Monkey King with the lion shoulder pad because I'm a year of the monkey and Leo in zodiac sign. So this is our sketch. Then doing the background first and we're adding layers, different colors as of now. Then change it to the color what we wanted, adding the shadow. This is how it looks like when you hide the sketch. Now ambient occlusion has been added. Of course you can expect all these layers. And adding the highlights and specular. And finish it with an overpaint. So I guess that's all for this video and I hope you learned something from this. Remember that it's not about this software or method. This tutorial only helps you to see some details you might miss and in the end, it's always you, the one who decides how it should look like in the end. That is why you need to study more and practice more often to be perfect. I mean nobody's perfect but try to be better. So yeah, if you like this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing for more art videos and tutorial in the future.